pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, be present here now. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for the gift of our bodies as we've gone through this semester. Seeing and understanding that you have a great plan for each one of us. Lord, tonight, may we see even more so in all aspects of our lives, our bodies as a gift, a gift to glorify you with. May our lives give you glory, may our bodies give you glory. As we say, all glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and shall be be God. Uh, before we start off, um, in a minute I'm going to introduce a good friend to come up here and talk to y'all. Uh, but first I just want to open up and continue that prayer of looking at um, a certain scripture verse just real quick. And it's from 1 Corinthians. Um, and it says this, it says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God and that you are, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Um, so there's a lot of different talk, there's a lot of different even, there's some states that are decriminalizing um, certain drugs and all this stuff, and, so there's, I'm, and it's around at your schools, like, I know. Uh, it was around when I was, in, when I was in high school a few years ago, but um, either, I'm sure most people in this room either have um, seen drugs, they've known somebody who has is, who is used drugs before, they might even know somebody who is addicted to drugs. And so what does the church say about that? What, what is the big deal about drugs if everybody um, at least knows somebody who's doing it? Uh, whether that be marijuana, whether that be more hardcore drugs. Um, what does it matter to us? What does it matter to God? And what does it matter to our bodies? And so, um, this, when we're talking, I'm going to invite Robbie up here in a second. And when I do, I want you to have this in your mind. Um, that when we talk about anything, especially tonight, we're talking about uh, the use of drugs. Um, we're going to remember what St. Paul says. And he says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Um, so what does that matter to us? What does that matter to the church? I want to invite up um, Robbie. Uh, Robbie is a life team missionary. Um, Y'all give him a big round of applause. A little over two years ago, I was in high school, and high school was all about your image. It was all about the friends you hang out with. It was all about popularity, the things that you do to be popular, to be seen in the right light. Um, and that, for me, was not always the best thing. Uh, I would just hang out with whoever, uh, whoever was the most popular in school. I'd go hang out with them. Um, and what happens when, when you when you look for this is you know we find we find drugs. I'm not I'm not too far away removed from it, um, but drugs are there, and we're told that they're bad. And I think that's sometimes that's the only explanation we get that drugs are bad. Don't do them. Um, and I tried to look in the catechism for a little bit about it, and um, to basically sum it up, it's when we use a substance other than its intended purpose, when we use something. Uh, when we try and use something to change our state of mind the way we think. This is when we get into the sinful nature of drugs, alcohol, pretty much anything that we can use to change the way we feel. Um, but why does that matter? You know, we see our friends doing it. Maybe our teachers, our parents, our older brothers. Um, I know in the state of California where I was living, you could just get a card. You could go down to Venice Beach and you could just walk around the pier and you could get a card. You can go over, you could buy marijuana and everything was okay. So you really start to wonder like, why are these things so bad? Why are people still saying I can't do them? Because I see my friends doing them. I see my teammates doing them. I want to be a part of that too. I want to be part of that life. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But as, uh, as Jonathan said in 1 Corinthians, which is the first one I'll open up to, um, you know, it talks about our body being a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? So we are not our own, we are God's creation. We are a gift from God to this world. Now if you're here, I'm assuming you're Catholic. I know I'm not the wrong choices. Being Catholic is about 
who you are when no one's looking. And you have to decide if you're going to be part of this world which believes that we're just a body or if you're going to be part of something more. Knowing that you are a body and you have a soul. That you are so much more. So much more than just a body to throw away. But you are indeed a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that lives within us. And the choices that we make with this body, we may, it may not have an effect that shows up the next day. We, it may take years until we notice this effect. It may take years till the choices that we make on some Friday night affect our lives. Um, so as a sophomore in high school, I was playing on the varsity team. It was a dream come true. I loved it, had a lot of fun. But there was something that came along with that that I had um, no idea how it would affect me. You know, um, I think we see high school football movies. You see it in your schools, uh, but just drug and alcohol use. That was something that was introduced to me, and I grabbed onto it. Because you know, I, could, I could drink, and people would be like, oh, that guy, you know, he drinks. Or like, oh, he smokes now. So now like, that made me like, part of this cool crowd. And it was nice, because it, it filled me up. It was something that filled this ego. It was something that filled this, this hole. Um, and as time went on, as I you know, became a junior and senior in high school, it was more parties, more drugs, um, just trying to fill this hole that I didn't realize because I was constantly trying to fill it, constantly trying to fill it with drugs and alcohol. I was still playing football. I had two partial scholarships to uh, one to Northern Arizona and one to the University of Wyoming after my senior year. Absolutely loved it. Went on a trip to Northern Arizona. They liked me. They were going to give me 75% scholarship, but I had another offer from a D1, so I go over there. Uh, and when I get there, coach tells me, hey, you know, we kind of gave the scholarship to someone a little bigger, uh, a little stronger. So, but we'd like to, you know, have you as a walk-on. So that just, just frustrated me seeing this dream I felt was just taken away from me. So I went back to Arizona, called the coach, and he was like, oh, sorry, you waited a little too long, so we already gave that away. So there I was, feeling like I just lost everything that I worked so hard for. And I still remember to this day, the first thing I did, I went back, and I just hung out with my friend, and we just lit up. Something that, because I didn't know how to deal with pain anymore. I didn't know how to feel uh, when something was taken away from me, so I just tried to fill it with so many other things. So I started playing football at a local junior college in Southern California, Saddleback College. Um, you probably never heard of it, but um, there's some there's some rough players over there. Um, I remember just being introduced to. We had ex-cons on the team. We had ex-military. Our middle linebacker just got released from prison the year before for manslaughter. Um, so it was a very difficult environment, um, especially fresh out of high school. You got guys wanting you to run drugs. You got guys wanting uh, to run security for, for deals. And very difficult to find your faith. So I continued to try and go on. I still wanted to play ball. That was the only thing keeping me there. So I played. I ended up starting three out of the first five games. I was having a great time. I was having all this attention. Everyone was telling me what a great job I was doing. Until, uh, until after that fifth game, I tore my rotator cuff, my labrum, and my bicep tendon, and my left shoulder. Uh, I was sidelined for the rest of the season. Underwent major surgery. Uh, took seven months of physical therapy and rehab just to be able to raise my hand above my head again. And during that time, I fell into the darkest hole that I can remember. Almost every other day, just leaving practice to go get drunk. Almost every day, using my pain pills to get high, more than what was prescribed to me. Using the extras to sell on the street so I'd have a little more cash. And I just felt empty all the time. Something that my friends told me was gonna fill me up. My teammates, my brothers, they told me that, hey, just take another drug. Try this pill. Try this powder. This is gonna fill you up. This is going to make you happy. And it was giving me nothing but sadness and pain. And it took until, I think it was about two years ago, New Year's Eve, walking home from a party, drunk. And I'm going across the street over to where my car is. And 
Uh, I step off the road and I'm almost hit by a car. About, probably if this is the car, I'm standing right here. It just passes right in front of me. And at that moment, I sat back and I really thought about what I was doing. Why was I taking so many drugs? Why was I living this life? And I found, that's when I really realized that that life that I was living, it was for nothing. That, the, that what the world was telling me, that these things would satisfy me, was nothing but a lie. It was nothing but an empty, hollow lie. And I thought back to truly think of when was the last time I was really joyful. And that was when I was in Life Team, when I had this relationship with Christ. And then I was genuine, I was authentic, and I was joyful. So I call up my youth minister. I tell him everything that was going on. And uh, I ultimately like start, start helping out at our youth group. And at that point, I'm still struggling with drugs and alcohol. Because I, I made a... I told myself that I had to, I had to stop doing this if, if I was going to live much longer. This had to stop. Um, and it's a tough road when there's something that you're doing almost every day and you get to the point where you just have to stop. There's going to be those times when you're going to trip and you're going to fall and it's going to hurt. But I kept on looking, trying to find hope that there is going to be more. So I kept on going. A few more months passed by. It was two Mays ago. Um, I'm sitting and I get this uh, invitation from my friends um, to go work security for this event. It's called EDC. Uh, it's in Las Vegas. It's a big electronic music festival. All my teammates were going. Um, the girls we were hanging out with, and it was it was that it was that that choice that I was just trying to move away from. It was right there. It was right in front of me. I could go work security for two days, make 200 bucks easy and then go party the next two. At that same time, there was this youth ministers conference going on. And, um, and it was at the same time, and I knew that if I went there, then I could really grow in my faith. I could learn in my ability to speak with others. I could learn how to overcome what I was dealing with. But I didn't know what to do. It was a big moral dilemma, and so I went to uh, the person who knew me best, and that was my mom. See, I'm a big mama's boy, I love my mom. She's great, she's wonderful. She stood by me, even through all of that. Um, and at that point, she just let me go pray about it. So I go pray, and um, that night, we have a night on spiritual warfare, and I just realized a lot of oppression that the devil was putting on me. Uh, and in that night, when I'm praying, I'm just praying for a release from all of this, uh, for something just to break the chains of this addiction on my wrists and my ankles. At the end of this chain, I see this huge, heavy weight. But on this weight's inscribed all the sins that I was dealing with at the time, whether it was drug and alcohol abuse, lying, cheating, stealing, lustful relationships, it didn't, it, you think of a sin, it was, it was on there. Um, and I see this just pulling me closer and closer to the edge of the cliff, and I see myself struggle and fall a little more, and then I look up and I see the clouds start to part, and I see Christ come out of the clouds standing right in front of me. And then I look up, and I look into his eyes, and I see this look of mercy and forgiveness and sorrow. So I look up again at him and, and he points down and the chains are broken and I stand up and I look him in the eyes and he looks back at me and I feel like he's going to tell me something. But just as soon as I feel like he's going to tell me something, he starts to walk away. And as he's walking away from the cliff, I remember him turning his head back to me and just said, are you coming? And at that point, I came to realize where I was. And I, was I was crying all over the place, and I knew that God had such a greater plan for me. So much greater than settling for the place where I was in. He has a plan for grace and for glory. So I said at that moment, you know what, Lord, I'm going to come in with an open mind and open heart, and whatever you have for me, I will do it. So I go to this youth minister's convention, and we fill our bodies up with, with junk, with crap, drugs, alcohol. Maybe it's music, maybe it's movies. But we fill ourselves up. But there's a source, something greater that can fill us up, and that's the Lord. The Lord offers to fill us up. And we can't really accept that when we're already full of other things. This is one of the reasons why it's important to let the Lord fill us up. Um, now the Lord, He invites us to this heavenly banquet. He talks, um, he talks about heaven being this great and glorious place. 
and there is so much more. Uh, and there are so many great blessings to have. And this is the temple of the Lord. Um, as banquet table. And we are stuck, I think in a lot of times when we're stuck in sin, uh, we're trying to eat from this from this dumpster. You know, imagine it. You're, you're sitting in front of this dumpster. You know, maybe it's got like, you know, chicken bones, moldy apples, or whatever. This is all you've known, though. You've, all you've known is this little dumpster right over here. This is all you have. So every time you get hungry, you know, you're digging through. Okay, what am I going to eat today? All right, moldy apple. All right, got that. Chicken bones, sweet. Uh, oh, two-week-old pizza, got that. And that's what, you're, that's what we're filling up on, when there's something so much greater over there. We have the heavenly banquet of the Lord. And He invites us. His invitations, maybe it's through a person, maybe it's through a friend, maybe it's through prayer. But it's this invitation. He's telling us to step into the unknown. Just take one step. Take one step. But what happens is we get uncomfortable. We get scared. And we go back to what's comfortable. And that's the dumpster. Even though there's filet mignon, there's surf and turf. So there's ceviche over there. There's surf and turf. There's pizza. Deep dish pizza. I love Chicago deep dish pizza. So I'm saying that's over there. There's all kinds of amazing things. But I'm stuck over here in my dumpster because it's comfortable. Now if we want anything that Christ promises us, it takes being uncomfortable. Now, I'm not saying that this path to Christ is easy. It's not a cakewalk. Even though there's cake over here at the heavenly, it's not a cakewalk. In fact, it is very difficult. Um, for it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9, it says, Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that your fellow believers throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. And you have to realize that it's not easy. We're constantly being stalked. That we're praying. The devil doesn't want us to reach this banquet. He doesn't want, to, want us to reach this table. He wants us to stay where we're comfortable. And that dumps me. But when we, when we reach the Lord, He says that we are a new creation, that we are made new. When we finally undergo all that scrutiny, when we go through what's difficult, He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. That we were created new. It doesn't matter what you did before because there's nothing you can do to change that. When we choose to follow the Lord, we are new. I am a new person. And that's one of the biggest things that I've had to realize. That's the only reason why I feel comfortable sharing my story with y'all today is that I knew that I am made new. And it doesn't matter what I did two years ago. It doesn't matter the choices that I made. True, it affected a lot of people. It turned a lot of people who were close to me, it turned them away from the church. So they thought the church was just full of hypocrites like I was. But there's nothing that I can do to change that. But I know this, that I am made new, and so are you. And we choose to follow the Lord, there are truly great and amazing things. The amount of blessing, I'll give you a little thing that's going to help you. This, it'll keep you clean, makes suds, it's called soap. All right, and soap stands for sacraments, overcoming sin habits, accountability, and prayer. So the sac when you have all this, and you truly are a temple of the Holy Spirit, when you realize Christ living in you, there's nothing that you cannot do. For you can always ask, and God will be there. And remember that you are made for more. Lord Jesus, please pray for us. Please be next to us, Mother Mary. Wrap us in your arms and help us to be close to your Son. Amen.